you may have heard of Google Apps for Education, Google's suite of productivity tools specifically designed for education setting. It offers a suite of tools that encourage uh, collaboration between students and teachers uh, free of charge to K-12 institutions as well as higher education institutions. The reasons that uh, many schools are using Google Apps include the ability to create and share documents with other people, very similar to Microsoft Office. Collaborative features are built into every product and so it encourages collaboration between students, teachers, administration, and other staff and it is centrally controlled by a domain administrator. Um, so school districts have complete control over everything associated with the domain. And thus of all, Google Apps for Education is completely free. There are some major differences between the regular commercial Google account and a Google Apps for Education account. The first thing you'll notice is the extension on uh, the username or email. Your Gmail account is your username at gmail.com. However, your Google Apps account will be your name at whatever your school's domain is. So that could be you know, your name at libertyschool.edu or something similar. So it's a, a custom URL. The Google Apps for Education account is completely ad-free. You will not see any advertisements. Um, it offers custom branding so you can upload your own logo. Um, that will be standard across all of the different services. You will receive some private video sharing that allows you to upload and share videos with everyone in your domain. You can enable email archiving and security and there are some tool specific controls that we will visit in a little bit. These are the core applications within Google Apps for Ed. You have Calendar, Docs, Sites, and Gmail. This makes up the backbone of the product suite and are the most common tools that are used. For each of these applications, there are some core features. First of all, and probably most uh, valuable, is the single login. One username and password gives you access to all of these core applications and many, many others. So no more worrying about uh, passwords for different services, no more trying to help students keep track of them. One username and password gets you into everything. All of these products allow you to um, custom brand, um, add in your own school logo. Um, you can create custom groups, so for each grade in your school or each class, um, you can create a group, you can create groups for the clubs and different uh, after school activities to allow easy access to the students or staff members in that specific group. Every one of these products can be turned on and off by the domain administrator. Many schools turn off Gmail access for younger students in elementary and middle school. It's very easy to do. One click allows that change to populate all of your user accounts. So no longer do you have to go multiple places to manage these different accounts. Here are some of the specific features of Gmail. Um, you can turn off Gmail completely, like I just discussed, or you can limit email sending to specific addresses or to um, only within the domain. And this might be a good option for middle school students who you want to teach how to um, use email, um, proper email etiquette, but you don't want to give them free reign to email anybody in the world. You can enable this so that they can only email their teachers within your school domain, but no one outside and no one from outside the domain is able to email in. Labs within Gmail can be turned on and off as can voice and video chat as necessary. For a lot of the other projects or products um, there are some custom sharing options. You may be familiar with this um, screen here if you use um, Google Docs or Calendar or Sites 
um, normally you will see the three links that are um, excluded from the green box. However, with a Google Apps account, you receive two additional options that allows you to share a document, calendar, or site with everyone within your domain or um, enable anyone within the domain to view the resource if they have the link to do so. Google Docs um, is pretty much the same as the uh, commercial version with one exception and that is um, the ability to uh, store documents into a internal template gallery. This could be extremely valuable in a school setting as you could um, store uh, forms, um, documents that teachers need to fill out, uh, referral slips, things like that in the template gallery for quick access. There is one feature um, that is unfortunate about Google Docs. Um, there is a chat window within Docs and Spreadsheets and unlike Gmail in which you can turn off uh, the chat capabilities in Docs, you cannot turn this off. So that's just something to be aware of. If you enable doc access for your students, they will also have access to this chat window. I would hope that the ability to turn this feature on and off would be added very soon. Google Sites is a um, product that allows for the creation of web pages. It's very intuitive, easy to use, and creates very nice looking um, dynamic sites. Um, in Google Apps, you receive all of the standard features of sites with some additional options. Um, one of them is that there is no limit, size limit for any site. With a traditional account, it was uh, 100 megabytes per site. Um, the, your entire Google Apps domain um, does have a limit to 100 gigabytes um, for all of the sites, but that's a very, very large number um, that would take quite a while to reach. Sites can be categorized using custom categories. You could have clubs, classes, administration um, to allow for easy uh, sorting of these uh, various uh, sites. And another really neat feature is that you can designate any site as a portal or a start page. And um, uh, you could even use that as your home page. I've seen schools that design their home page in Google Sites and set that as the landing page when you go to their school's domain. You can also set up a start page for students when they log in that gives them access to all their different uh, tools as well as announcements. I've seen that done for both students and uh, staff. Google Calendar is a great uh, scheduling tool. Um, it allows you to share calendars easily with your colleagues. Um, you can create a class calendar in which you post homework assignments and then share that with your students. Google Calendar within Google Apps for Education receives all the standard features of Calendar with the addition of the ability to create resource calendars that allow you to schedule uh, resources such as rooms, or uh, laptop carts, projectors, things of that nature. So a staff member can view the resource calendar, see it when that resource is available, and then schedule them themselves in in a time slot. And it prevents um, double booking, which is very cool and is something that you cannot do within the uh, commercial version of Google Calendar. In addition to all of the core products that we just discussed, um, Google Apps for Education uh, users will also receive access to virtually all of Google's products. I've put some of the popular ones here, Google Voice, Vlogger, Picasa, Google Reader, um, Google Talk, and YouTube. All of these things can be accessed through Google Apps for Education. Um, again, the benefit here is one username and password will get you access to all of these things. The downside to these secondary applications is that um, there are no specific controls for them. So unlike um, you know, Gmail, which you can turn on uh, chat or turn off chat as necessary, for all of these, it's an all or nothing um, solution. You either have full access or no access. But it is important to note that um, uh, you are not required to enable access to any of these. You can turn them all off or turn them all on or um, turn on just the ones that you would like. I would expect in the future they will slowly roll out more granular controls so that you can turn on and off specific features of these different products. 
So what's the cost of Google Apps Education? Like I said, it's 100% free. Um, does not cost a cent to sign up and get started. There are a couple of paid services that you might be interested in and may need to um, use depending on your needs. Uh, one of them is posting email archiving. Um, some schools require that all emails sent from uh, the, through the district domain be archived for a period of seven or ten years and that can be achieved through Postini. It's a fairly reasonable price. Um, it varies depending on how many users you have and um, what services that you would like, but um, somewhere around $10 or $11 per user per year um, for that. Again, depends on um, a lot of other variables, so double check, use that URL to check the specific pricing. There are also um, designated technical services and training providers um, that you can contact for data migration needs and professional development in, in the uh, Google Apps Marketplace. So if that sounds good to you, uh, you have three options for signing up. The first and simplest option is to go sign yourself up. Um, visit the URL at the top of the screen there and uh, fill in the form and you will be uh, a Google Apps for Education user within a matter of days. This is not something that just anybody can do um, simply because you will need some information about your domain in order to register the domain. Um, things like your MX records and access um, to your hosting provider to set some things up. So this is um, something that a, uh, a domain um, administrator will need to do but it's very simple, very easy to do. Um, only takes maybe 10 minutes to fill out the information um, and then Google will take it, verify all of it and uh, get you set up very, very quickly. The second option is to contact Google and their uh, sales um, department um, will guide you through the process. And This is primarily reserved for larger districts or even statewide implementations of Google Apps or uh, situations where there's a lot of complex um, migration involved. You have a lot of usernames and data that you need to migrate over to the Google Apps uh, system. The third option is to contact a Google Apps for Education partner through the uh, marketplace and they will help guide you through the process, um, something that these people have done many, many times before. They will help migrate your data. They can um, integrate Google Apps with existing services that you may already have. Maybe you have a, a cloud-based gradebook or attendance um, program that you're currently using. They can help to integrate that, do custom scripting to allow you to do some interesting things and allow your various systems to talk to one another. So those are your three options to uh, sign up. Again, any of them will work. Um, you can sign up yourself uh, free of charge or um, contact one of the Google Apps partners to help guide you through the process. There's a lot more to Google Apps that I've not covered here. Um, there's the Google Apps Training Center which provides a lot of helpful information about these products that you can use to help train your staff. There's the Certified Trainer Program which you might want to have some of your staff members go through to help train other um, members of your staff and students. There's the Google Certified Teacher Program, which is a great professional development opportunity for staff. And then there's a the Google Apps Marketplace, which can extend Google Apps for Education even further, giving you additional capabilities from third-party uh, vendors. So Google Apps for Education is a great opportunity to um, give staff and students collaborative tools that can help them uh, get more done. and um, engage in a dynamic learning process.